Welcome to Sinful's Horror Stories. Tonight's video features military horror stories. These stories were all sent in from viewers like yourselves. Please be sure to show the respect and love that these veterans deserve. I want to make sure that everyone knows how truly grateful I am for all of the sacrifices that our military makes, foreign and domestic. Sit back, relax, stay sinful. Story number one. The other day I went to visit my grandfather. I won't say his name for privacy reasons, but he served in the Vietnam War during the 1960s. Often I would ask him about his time in the war, and he would tell me stories. I'm currently thinking of joining the military myself. Learning about his past experiences makes me more intrigued to join the armed forces. However, the other day for the first time, I asked my grandfather if he had any scary or near-death experiences. He said he had a couple, but there was only one that really stood out to him, and something that he would never forget. From this point of the story, it will be told in the perspective of my grandfather. During boot camp, I befriended a man who for the sake of this story, I will call Enrique. That's not his real name, but again it's for privacy reasons. He was of the Navajo descent. This is important for later in the story. I became best friends with him, and we were actually in the same squad during our deployment to Vietnam. On one rainy night there was a squad that had cleared out a village in a few farms that was located near a jungle. When our squad had arrived, we were given orders to go into pairs to search the nearby jungle. We had to make sure that we had no wounded soldiers or even prisoners to capture. Of course me and Enrique were paired up together. We were slowly walking around and scanning the area. We then heard something snap. We turned to see what it was. I couldn't make out what it was at first because it was quite dark, but there was still enough moonlight to see just enough. It was a goat. It sounded like it was in some kind of pain as it kept crying out. I grew up on a farm so I was a natural animal lover and wanted to see if I could comfort the animal in any way. I set down my rifle and slowly walked towards a goat. However, as I was about to approach the goat, Enrique placed his hand on my shoulder, stopping me. He said, get back. That's not a goat. I said, what do you mean? Yes, it is. He then told me in a firm voice to get back and leave with him right now. I honestly was about to ignore him and see if the goat was okay as in my own mind I couldn't leave an animal that was in distress. At that very moment in time the rest of our squad was attacked. Enrique ran off towards the gunfire. I picked up my rifle and took one last look at the goat. Something was different. The goat was no longer crying in pain. In fact it wasn't making any noise and it started to slowly back away still with its eyes watching me. The weird thing was the goat's eyes were now bright white. The goat slowly backed off into the darkness of the jungle. I swear to God at that point it looked like the goat was about to stand up. I couldn't believe what I was seeing. But like I said we were under attack and a bomb had gone off near me. So I had no choice but to run. Thankfully during the attack only a few of our squad were injured and none killed. That night as we set up camp, me and Enrique partnered to take turns in keeping lookout as the other ones slept. Before falling asleep, the incident with the goat never left my mind. I asked Enrique what he meant but that it wasn't a goat and that he told me to leave it alone. He said something I would never forget for as long as I live. He said what he saw was a skinwalker something he was very familiar with in his culture. Before I even told him what I saw he already said, the white eyes and standing on two legs. I was in shock. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. The thing was I believed him, how could I not? I witnessed it with my own two eyes. 
What keeps me up some nights is the thought of what happened if we weren't attacked at that moment. And what would have happened if I went over and fell prey to that skinwalker? From here on out, the story is told from my perspective, not my grandfather's. After hearing what my grandfather told me, it honestly freaked me out and I couldn't sleep that night. A lot of things made sense after this. It was why he moved away from the family farm pretty much as soon as he got back from Vietnam. It was also why he would never let my dad get any pets. The incident scared my grandfather for life, and honestly after hearing this, the fear of skinwalkers has made me quite paranoid. Story number two. My great-grandfather died when I was about four years old, so I don't remember him very well. I know him well though from things that my family and people who knew him have told me. One thing they always told me was he was very religious, a dedicated Christian who would attend church every Sunday without fail. He wasn't always that way, however. My grandfather told me that before he went to fight in World War II, he was the biggest skeptic there was. He didn't believe in God and ghosts and spirits or anything of that nature. When he came back from the war, it was like he was a whole different person. He became very religious and all his beliefs had been flipped. My family and myself always thought he became that way after the war because of the horrors he witnessed. That made a lot of sense at the time. It was only recently when me, my grandpa and dad were clearing out our attic and we came across a box full of my great grandpa's military belongings, such as war mementos, medals, pictures and a few other things. One thing I found was a diary. I showed it to both my grandpa and dad, and they said it must have been the only diary he ever wrote. I flicked through the diary to check the dates, and it was all written during the time where he was overseas. My great grandpa fought in the Battle of the Bulge in Belgium, if you didn't know, the Battle of the Bulge was one of the most, if not the most bloodiest battles during World War II. The two allies had little ammo and supplies, and were fighting a battle in the freezing cold whilst being bombed by the Germans. I will narrate during the perspective of my great-grandpa from this point on. Myself and the rest of my platoon had just been shelled non-stop by the Germans. A foxhole I was originally in had been blown away from the bombing, so I had to run and take cover in another foxhole nearby. Once the bombing stopped, I realized I must have ran quite far, as I couldn't hear nor see any of my fellow soldiers. There was smoke and windy snow in the air, as I was looking around from a foxhole I had found. I started hearing footsteps crunching the snow. I ducked down and looked carefully to see if it was an enemy. Thankfully it was an ally, someone who was in our regiment, but I wasn't familiar with. The man looked pale as hell and in complete shock, I guess from all of the bombings that had taken place. He was walking very, very slowly. When he finally made his way to the foxhole I was in, he collapsed and fell in the foxhole. This wasn't abnormal, a lot of soldiers would be shell-shocked and not really know what they were doing or where they were going. I did a quick check to see if he was hurt, and on the surface he was fine. After calming down, he introduced himself as Randy. This wasn't his real or full name, but because of privacy and respect, I will use a false name for the sake of the story. He didn't say much, but I didn't need him to. As long as he could walk, that was good enough. We had to slowly make our way to where I thought my platoon was located. As I said earlier, it was smoky and it was snowing, so I couldn't see too far. As I was walking, I heard talking and footsteps. The thing was, it wasn't English. It was German. I grabbed Randy and pulled him to the ground. We were hidden behind a tree and some shrub. I could hear the Germans talking and walking right on the other side of the tree. At that moment, I honestly thought I was about to die. By some miracle, we weren't noticed, 
and continued walking through the forest. We finally made it back to our platoon. A few of my friends and squad leader greeted me. I told them about the close encounter we had just had with the Germans. My friends looked confused and they said, Who's we? Was someone with you? I said, yeah, Randy was... I turned around and Randy wasn't with me. I thought he must have got left behind somehow, which was weird as he was right behind me. I told my squad we need to get out of there and get Randy. They kept asking me who Randy was. As I didn't know him very well, I just said his name and that he was in our regiment. Someone from my squad asked me to confirm his last name, and I confirmed it. They looked at each other and said something that made time stand still around me, put me in complete shock. Randy died during an attack two weeks ago. He was shot and bled out. I couldn't believe it and wanted to go back out, but my squad wouldn't let me. They assured me that he had died, and I was just seeing things. One of them even showed me his dog tags. The diary stopped some time after this incident. My great-grandpa wrote for a few more weeks mostly about the bombing and his encounter with Randy. I will never know as my great-grandpa isn't here with us anymore, but I think he became religious and spiritual after what he had witnessed. For someone as what my family described my great-grandpa as, for him to change his beliefs makes me believe what my grandfather saw in the woods that day was some kind of spirit lingering around the battlefield. The stories I've heard from my great-grandpa's time in the war are scary, but that one chills my blood more than ever. Story number three. My name is Alex and I'm 37 years old. From 2007 to 2013, I served in the British Army and was also deployed all over the world, but mainly in Afghanistan. The story I'm about to tell takes place in Afghanistan. Since retiring from the armed forces, a lot of times people ask me about my experience while being deployed overseas. I also give pep talks to people who are or thinking about joining the military. I always tell people what I witnessed, how hard it can be, and overall what modern warfare is really like. One story I never tell, however, was one of the scariest moments in my own life. It wasn't even warfare related. One dark night, myself and three others were instructed to sweep a building that had three floors. The area had been evacuated as it was too dangerous for civilians to stay there. We had to make sure there were no people hiding in the building hostile or otherwise. We entered the building. One of us cleared the ground floor, the other cleared the first floor, and I myself checked the second floor, which was the last, whilst our other squad members stayed outside and made sure the outside perimeter was clear. When I got to the second floor, there was one light in the corridor and a window through the wall where the corridor ended. There were three rooms that I had to check. The first room, I checked unfortunately had a deceased soldier who was in our regiment. He was lying down with his radio in his hand. As sad as this was, we were used to this at this point. I checked the second room and it was a small bathroom that was empty. The third room I checked was, I guess some kind of bedroom, as there was a bed in there. There was also a closet that I checked and found to be empty. As I was checking each room, I could hear my team say floor clear, as they had finished checking their floor before me. Our radios were all on the same channel. One of our teams said regroup at the entrance of the building. As I was going downstairs, I heard something come through on the radio. It was faint, but I could make out someone was saying, Help! Help! I'm on the second floor! Please help! I thought maybe someone was hiding and using the deceased soldier's radio. I then radioed to my team to stand by, as I have made contact with someone on the second floor. 
Naturally, my first place to check was the first room where the radio was. It was empty. One thing had changed, however. The radio was no longer in the soldier's hand. It was now on the table, so I was right in hearing something. At that point, the light that was lighting the corridor suddenly the bulb just blew. The door at the end of the corridor, which was in the bedroom, started slowly creaking open. I couldn't see much as the light blew out, but the small window I mentioned earlier was letting in a faint light from the moon. I radioed for my team saying stand by for contact. I called out now saying whoever is in there needs to show themselves immediately. At that point my radio made a faint static noise. I took my eyes off the door to check my radio. As far as I could see it was fine. When I looked back up, however, I saw something that honestly made my blood run cold. Someone was peering around the corner of the door watching me. As I said, there was a little bit of moonlight peering through the window, so I could see it enough that it was a person. It looked like a grown man standing there watching me. Something didn't seem right. The way he was watching me seemed so uncanny. I wanted to speak and tell him to come out with his hands up, but the words wouldn't come out of my mouth. I was honestly frightened by this man, by the way he was staring at me. I tried to radio my team, but the only response I got was faint static. I didn't want to go near that man. I know I had a firearm, but it might have been a civilian who didn't speak English or was scared himself. I grabbed my flashlight that I had on me. As I was fumbling around looking for the flashlight, the door that was open then slammed shut. The man was gone. I've been scared before, but this was different. This was something strange I hadn't come across before. As scared as I was, I was still a soldier and had a job to do. I plucked up the courage to walk down the corridor and check the bedroom. I scanned the room with the flashlight, and it was empty. That meant there was only one place that person could be, and that was in the small closet. I prepared myself as much as I could. I didn't even know what I was expecting, to be honest. When I finally opened the door, to my shock and relief, it was empty. I rushed out of the room and checked the other two rooms again, both empty. I then went all the way downstairs and outside the building, where I saw my three other teammates. They asked me where I was and why I wasn't responding to the radio. I didn't really have time to explain what happened, as we had to move out of there and then on to another building. In the end, I decided not to mention it, as I really didn't know what to think. To the few other people that I've told this story to, some believe me and some don't. As much as I've gone over it and over it in my head, I just can't work out a rational explanation. I know what I heard. I definitely saw that man. And somehow he just vanished. Out of all the scary experiences I had during my time overseas, that was without a doubt the most scariest moment. And the scariest moment of my life. Thank you guys for watching. Please be sure to leave a like, comment, share, share, and share again. Subscribe to the Sinful Society now. You know we need you. Join us. Don't fight it. Hit that subscribe button. Do it now. Email all of your true scary stories to thesinfulsavant at gmail.com. I will leave a link to my email in the description box below. Till we meet again, my friends, and stay sinful.